Welcome to the Confessions of a Group X Instructor podcast. For group exercise junkies and enthusiastic classgoers, we'll explore and uncover authentic, thought-provoking, and heartwarming industry education and inspiration from entertaining, badass fitness pros. And now your host, creator of Warrior Rhythm, Warrior Strength, Warrior Combat, and Warrior Kids Group Fitness Brands, Ellen DeWord. Here we grow. Welcome, everybody, to Confessions of a Group X Instructor podcast. How did you like my voice modulation there? I was like really working on it for you. (laughs) I was trying hard. Uh, I was all over the place. Uh, And also this is take two, truth be told, because my dog was just like scratching at the door and it didn't really stop. So here we go, take two. Uh, And by the door, I podcast from... Do you know this already? Have I already shared this with you guys? That I have an empty nest now? Do you know that my kids are like grown and gone? They're not that far. I think I talked to them more now than I did when they lived here. But anyway, this is one of, um, this is my youngest son's bedroom. And it is now the podcasting room slash the guest bedroom. There's a bed in here. Slash my art studio. So it has great lighting and uh, here we are. But anyway, yes, uh, Molly was scratching at the door. So take two on essential email etiquette. Does that sound like a boring topic? It's not. I promise it. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a little boring, but I, it's not going to be boring. It's really important. This is stuff that I wish I would have known. I wish someone would have told me how to email professionally when I started out as a professional. <laughs> and uh, I've learned some things along the way. That's why I'm doing this podcast at this stage of my life in a nutshell, because I've learned from a lot of my own mistakes And I've learned from a lot of great resources and I've learned from a lot of things. And so, yeah, some of these things are things that I have done wrong. And then, and then, and then, and then I was on the receiving end of the same kind of behavior. And I was like, oh, that doesn't feel so good. I don't like that. That wasn't very professional. Oops, I've done that before. (laughs) So some of this is just stuff I've learned the hard way. And I think I can dish it out pretty quickly. So here we go. Uh, Let me start by trying to establish some credibility with you that I email a a lot. Like, I mean, I want to say I email more than you do, but (laughs) I just, I guess I don't really know that for sure. (laughs) I don't really know that for sure, but I definitely, it would definitely be close because I email, I have three email addresses that I have to maintain and check and work on work in daily. I have my DAC, Downtown Athletic Club, email address, edward at downtownac.com. That was assigned to me from the company. I have my company's email address, which is ellen at warriorinstructors.com, another Outlook uh, professional address. And... uh, I have my Gmail, which is ellendeword at gmail.com, which I actually do a lot of work and business and stuff out of as well. So I have to check those emails every day. And just so you know, email, it, I it's a lot. Like I have a ton of work to do in my inboxes every day. And uh, it's not my favorite thing in the world to do. But anyway, here we go. So I think that this episode will be valuable to bosses, like managers, group fitness managers. I think that this will be also super beneficial, of course, to group fitness instructors and to solopreneurs. Because I know a lot of you kind of wear, actually some of you wear all three of those hats, Uh, like me. (laughs) I wear all three of those hats. Some of you wear two of those hats. So by like solo premiere, I mean like you have your own business. Maybe you're doing online personal training or online classes or you're selling supplements or you um, are doing other things in addition to teaching. So you kind of have your own business too. So all these things are going to be some best practices. Um, So here we go. If you don't have a company email, 
I really recommend Gmail. I really recommend Gmail. AOL and Yahoo are passe. They're dated. They're old. So I recommend, it's 2024, peoples. Let's do a makeover on your email. If it's been years and years and years, and you are like gymgirl24 at yahoo.com, it's time to change your email address. And you'll be so glad you listened to this episode today. It should be your name. Ellen DeWord at gmail.com. It should be your name. And if your name is so common that it's not available, put it on an underscore, put a period in there. Um, but it needs to be searchable. It's really hard. I mean, it, it's it's cumbersome for me uh, and for you or for your boss or whomever when it's like hard to find your email address. Like when they're searching for it and they just want to start to type your name they want it in the two column, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the two line, you know, they just want to type your name and have your email come in there. And when it's like Jim girl, 24 at Yahoo, it's not going to come in there. It needs to be your name. So that's one tip. Okay. Ready next your, your signature. Don't hate me for this. You know, I'm sappy and I love quotes and all these things. It, you know, no, mm -mm, take it out. Don't have your, you don't want to have a busy, cluttered, distracting signature. It should be super simple. Your contact information, your name, your company. So try to avoid, like maybe a picture of you. I'm not really a fan of the picture, like maybe, but less is more is my main point on the signature. Less is so much more. It actually de detracts. It, and also distracts from what you're trying to say. Uh, so you wouldn't want to have your picture, your favorite quote, all your social media handles, a company logo, and all your contact information. Okay. Next, best practice. Try to reply within 24 hours, better yet by end of business day. That means you're checking your email every day. That is a basic, uh, what am I trying to say? What's the word I'm looking for? A basic expectation. Like if you have, if you're an instructor, I know you might only teach once a week, or maybe you are quote unquote, just a sub or you it's by the way, it is not a hobby, but maybe you see it as a hobby. It's not a hobby. It's a real job, but you know, sometimes group fitness instructors think like it's not a real job because it's so much fun and they would do it for free because they love it so much. So sometimes group fitness instructors like fall under this, like, uh, like, like it's just this fun thing I do on the side. And so they're not in the mindset of like, no, I need to check my email every day because what if the manager is sending something important today? It's a job. It's a real job. Check your email every day. <laughs> Okay. Didn't mean to get so passionate about that. Acknowledge that you got it. Even if it's like an email that was like, a, you know, some newsy stuff that went out about this, that, and the other. And, um, uh, acknowledge that you got it, say thank you or got it or send a thumbs up emoji. Um, and if, and if you're supposed to respond with something and you can't yet, like, you need to do something, you're being asked to do something or you need to do something and you need like five days to do it, respond anyway, acknowledge receipt. It's respectful and it's really helpful. I am so happy when I send important email. I'm never gonna send an unimportant email. Why would I waste my time or anyone else's that works with me and for me? I will never send an unimportant email, ever, ever. So it's important to me. So please acknowledge it. And I really appreciate that level of respect from people that work with me and for me. Acknowledge that you received the email. If you are if you need to say like, thank you, got it. I will get that to you by the end of the week or by early next week or by end of business day tomorrow. Uh, it's just nice to know, you know? So that's important. Um, sometimes there's like, we're human beings. We are emotional creatures and we work with other human beings and we aren't perfect people. 
We are flawed and so are the people we work with. So sometimes little clashes and conflicts arise and that's normal. That's a normal part of business relationships and working with any group of people anywhere, no matter how amazing your facility, your team, your club is. Sometimes our feelings get involved about something. So let's talk about emailing when feelings and stuff like arise. For one, if you have like an issue with someone and you're going to, or something, or you're passionate about something, for one, always go like right to the person. Don't go over their head. And on the, along the same vein, don't copy over their head in the CC field, because that's the same thing as throwing them under the bus. But give them a chance, like give it a chance, give them a chance. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If if it was you on the other end and you had a chance to correct something or to fix something or to make something right or to like whatever, you don't want someone to like CC who's above you and potentially make you maybe look bad or something. So like do unto others with that CC line. <laughs> do unto others with it. Oh, I'm on Zoom if you're watching the YouTube video and I'm Zoom is doing all kinds of fun things in the background because I'm being I'm gesticulating. I'm really animated with my hands. And so it gave us fireworks just then. So if you're listening on the podcast, fireworks, fireworks. Okay. So all right, so you're going to let's say you you have some feelings about something and it's time to write an email. So one, avoid the all caps hyperbole. I like the word hyperbole. Um, don't be hyperbolic is what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> um, so avoid using all caps. Like every once in a while, if you're like super excited about something and you want to be like, yay, in all caps with three exclamation points, like every once in a while when there's, when it's positive, it's okay to use all caps. But generally speaking, we're talking about essential email etiquette and how to be the consummate professional behind your keyboard. And one of those things is to not be shouting. And those all caps is the same thing as shouting. Okay. That's shouting. Next time you see someone sending all caps in your email, just know that they're actually shouting at you. That's how it feels. That's how it's perceived. So along the same lines, like bold letters, all caps, red letters, 500 exclamation points and underline. It's too much. It's shouting. Tone it down. Don't be hyperbolic. Just write with normal, <laughs> normal case, <laughs> normal case. And also um, use normal font. Don't be like, oh, I like this courier font that looks unique or is cursive or something. Just keep it in your basic, like what's the basic one? Like Arial or something like that. Just keep it in your basic professional fonts. Like, believe me, if you, I'm all about standing out and being different and looking different and going against the grain and doing things weird. But we're talking about how to be a professional when you email. So keep your special fonts out of it. Um, mm -mm, okay, so you're heated or emotional, and it's you're trying to send an email just to the person. And so for number one. In the to section of the email, fill that in last. So if, and if you're replying to an email, delete it first, delete who it's going to, because you don't want to accidentally send the email before it's ready. So I recommend removing who you're sending it to until you are good and ready to hit that send button just in case. Also, like with Gmail, I don't know if other email servers are like this, but with Gmail, you can undo send. I think it naturally defaults to 30 seconds. You can literally unsend an email within that first 30 seconds. You can adjust that time in your settings to make it like two minutes long or something. But anyway, the point here is put the, their email in last. You're not ready to do that yet. So when you're sitting down to write, go ahead and write, type it all out. Just type it all out. Then super important next step, you are going to strip out every single word that you don't need. And anything that is emotional or heated or feeling or, or anything that is colorful, you are going to remove. Get the color out of the email. <laughs> remove it all. Strip it down to how to say it best. How to say 
less, best. As few words as possible to communicate your point. Then read it out loud or kind of like in your own head to yourself and make sure it makes sense. Strip it down, read it to yourself, make sure it makes sense because you know what you mean, like you know what you're thinking. But does it make sense if you didn't know what was, if you didn't know, if you didn't know what you were thinking, does it make sense? Then read it again like that, except this time you're reading it through their eyeballs. Put yourself in the recipient's shoes. Um, read it, imagining how it feels to read it if you're them. Empathy, so important. It's such an important part of being professional. <laughs> Same goes if you're like making a post on social media, but I'm going to talk about that in another episode. Then sleep on it. Sleep. You might not feel as strongly the next day. You might not feel as strongly the next day. You might wake up and be like, whoa, I'm so glad I didn't send that. I don't think I need to. If you still feel in the morning like, okay, I stripped out all the uh, like provocative or emotional language. It's not inflammatory it at all. I'm saying less best and I know how it will, or I've imagined to the best of my ability what it'll feel like to read it from their, their position. Um, then have someone else, a confidant, like your spouse or partner, if you can, if you have that, um, have them read it. And like, you know, like my husband will read an email like that for me. And he will tell me, like, don't send that. Or he will edit it further for me. And that's that's really helpful. So if you have that, take advantage of it. Um, and if, okay, so at this point, if you if you can't get there because you're still feeling so heated about whatever's going on, then it's not an email. Don't do it. It's a conversation. It's a face to face. It's a sit down. It's a let's let's get to let let's have coffee. Can I meet with you next week? Give us some time. Give us some time. It's a it's a meeting or maybe a phone call. But if you can't get there, then in that in that process with the email, don't send it. I've regretted one hundred percent of the fiery emails I've ever sent. Like never have I been like, yes, I'm glad I sent that. Always BCC. So blind copy groups always, unless there's two reasons that you would not want to blind copy. That's if it's kind of a smaller group, maybe eight people or so or whatever. And, um, and, and it's, and it's important to everyone you're including that they hear from the others in that group. For example, you need a cycle sub. So you're going to email all the cycle instructors at your studio or club facility, and there's 15 of them. You copy them, you CC them instead of blind copy them. That way, if one of them says, I can sub for you, the other ones know, like I'm off the hook. They, they can stop trying to figure it out for you. Maybe they were trying to work on getting daycare so they could help you. And so it's, it was important to the whole group to hear. That would be an example. The problem with copying a long list of people is uh, two things. You might not have permission to share their email addresses with everyone else, even if they're your staff. Like you might not be allowed to share that information with everyone else in there. What if you're sending 45 people an email and you don't blind copy them. And what if one of those people has some company and they just grab everyone's email and put it in their MailChimp? <laughs> or I don't know, like email is private. It's, it's not for us to decide who has access to anyone else's email. That's kind of like giving someone your home address or phone number kind of. So that would be a reason not to CC everyone. Also, People tend to like reply all 
on accident, especially the non-techie people on that list. <laughs> they tend to reply all, and sometimes they're saying something that's sensitive that like the whole group didn't want to know or need to know or um, that they wouldn't want the whole group to know. And also it's annoying to be getting having like messages, having your, e my, like I said, I, str I my email's uh, a mountain every day, three mountains every day. The last thing I want is extra email, especially that doesn't relate to me or I don't need to know. So it is, it bothers me just like it would bother you. It bothers me if I'm receiving email that isn't related to me and I don't need. So uh, BCC. Um, try not to contact your supervisor, boss, club owner, whomever signs your paycheck, whatever, who you report to, try not to reach out to them with non-emergencies during non-work hours. If you, so it depends on what their work hours are. Mine are very small at the club. Um, but with my operations of warrior, it's, you know, think about, I assume most people are working normal business hours. So Monday through Friday, you know, nine to five, and that they, they that in the evenings that they, I mean, I don't because I'm a workaholic, but that's another story. I still want to be able to like have a life in the evenings and on the weekends. And when I was on a Fit Bodies trip in Mexico for seven days, I want to be able to like check out of that headspace of work, 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 workaholism. So um, if it's not an emergency Try not to reach out. If you know your supervisor is on vacation, um, try not to contact them. And um, all right, this is really big. This is really, really big. Card catalog, your subject line. Card catalog is a reference to like old school libraries. Do they still have card catalogs? I don't know. I haven't been to a library in so long. But basically... Your subject line of your email is so important and it should be keyword searchable. So for example, by the way, I'm snowed in right now, totally snowed in in Eugene, Oregon. We are in a major winter freeze and actually the club has been closed and we've been doing virtual classes for the last two days. Uh, tomorrow, same thing. And a tree fell down and hit my neighbor's house. They're okay, but like it is serious here. And so I needed to find our inclement weather policy for my team. Thank goodness. The last time I sent it, I card cataloged the subject line, keyword searchable. So my subject, imagine if I would have, imagine if I would have last year or whenever I last needed the uh, inclement weather policy, imagine if I would have called the email subject, stay warm, stay safe, stay warm. Or imagine if I would have said, baby, it's cold outside with a snowman emoji in the subject line. How would I ever remember that a year later, two years later, three years later when I needed it again? How would I ever find that email? <laughs> I wouldn't. So thank goodness I knew to call that email inclement weather policy. So it's so helpful. Um, what I'm working on, you know, always every quarter, basically a new schedule. What if I, what if I was trying to release the new schedule and I called the subject, I'm so excited, excited to announce or big announcement, but it's really the new group fitness schedule. So new winter group X schedule. What are, what are people going to be searching for if they need that email again in the future? Um, okay. So that's important. Oh, so helpful. All right. So how about, let's talk about texting, texting. If you know, I don't want to assume that it's okay with your manager, but if it is okay with your manager to text, uh, and your teammates, it is um, an awesome efficiency in terms of work communication. I love using text. It's actually my favorite way. I feel like it's super quick, super efficient. I love it. It also has the potential to be more intrusive than email because, you know, we, we look at our phones more often and we look at our phones when we're maybe not in the headspace of work necessarily. So Again, just keep in mind those like kind of business hours, especially um, that applies more so to texting than to emailing um, if it's, you know, weekends and evenings. So texting can be great. 
Um, don't text a huge group of people for the similar reasons. Uh, only text the people that need to know what the others are saying. <laughs> Otherwise, it's it's it is rude. It is rude, and I and I've I've done this wrong. Like I've done it wrong, and then I've been on the receiving end of texts with twenty nine people in them, and mm -mm, nope, don't do it. Um, and then if it's like long. You know what I mean? Like a full, full entire page of your screen, kind of a text, or maybe two and a half. That should not be a text. If it's really long, it should be an email. If it's really, really long, that means it's really important to the sender. It's important, like really important. It's took two and a half screens of their phone. If it's really important, it needs to be an email. For one, that's a more appropriate place for something lengthy to read. And also, it if it's important, it should be timestamped. That's another nice thing about email is it does timestamp things. So if you have a deadline, like if I need to get, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, special events for Valentine's Day to my marketing department six weeks before we do it, like I'm sending an email, not a text, because I want a record of I did my work on time. Like I timestamp that stuff. Email. Even if it's short, rather than me texting like the marketing director, like I've here's the schedule, here's what we're gonna do on Valentine's Day. Like, what if that gets lost? Like, how am I ever gonna find that when I text her daily? <laughs> so anything that needs a timestamp, especially if it has to do with you and your work ethic and your deadlines, um, create a record of it, put it in email. Okay, so I was saying if it's really long, it should be an email. If it's really emotional, it shouldn't be an email. It should be a conversation. You see where we're going with this? Okay. Um, so we know we're never going to engage in a heated, heated text. We're never going to initiate heated text. We are never going to engage in heated emails. And we are never going to initiate heated emails. All right, so when should you use Facebook Messenger or Instagram Messenger for work? Uh, never. You should never use Facebook Messenger for work uh, for so many reasons. Um, you know, the whole timestamp, the whole everything. Like it's so, that's a social, like no. Um, but I was gonna be a little more specific on the why. I definitely use social media for work. I would say 90 Five percent of when I'm using social media, it is for work purposes for business. However, it's also where I go to decompress. When I'm having a glass of wine at night and I want to turn my work brain off, do you know what I do? I get on Instagram and I look for cat videos and videos with dogs and cute kids. And like right now, I'm so into that video on Instagram with the like two cats, one's orange and one's gray. And they're like, they're like having a conversation and people are putting like different captions above their heads. And it's so cute. And I'm obsessed. And it is like, it's like, helps me shut my brain, my workaholic brain off. And so the last thing I want is to like open my Instagram message. Um, while I'm tr tr literally trying to decompress to see that someone, you know, has sick kids and can't be at their class in the morning. I'm making, I'm making that up as an analogy, but like, I don't want to see work when I'm not in a work headspace. And so like, don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't send work stuff to your boss. Um, and if you're a manager, certainly don't send it to your team for the same reasons. Um, okay. I am going to confess. I already told you a lot of these things I learned the hard way. Um, but truly once many, 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 many years ago, I just didn't know about blind copying. I wish I would have. I hate this story. I don't even want to think about it, but here it is. I, I CC'd like I think my entire contact, this is so horrible. I, I, anyway, I CC'd my entire contact list basically. And one of them was a doctor and he like 
rebuked me hardcore and you know I like I guess I deserved it um because he was said I didn't have permission to share his email and I mean he was right I didn't know so super important to um to blind copy um and and all these things I really 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 think these tips are so helpful um some of them might have been common sense but not necessarily it wasn't common sense for me these are things I learned over the years I hope it's so helpful to you if you listen to my episode where I interviewed Barb Brodowski last week which was episode nine um she talked about how your reputation is your calling card it goes before you. So really this episode is just another tool. I hope to give you so many more. This is another way in which you can curate, bolster, protect, shield your reputation and to shine and to look like the consummate professional that you are instead of, you know, making some mistakes that tarnish it. So you guys, I love you. I so appreciate you hanging out with me and Molly. Molly, my dog, she's, she's chilling with us today. Thank you so much and happy teaching, happy emailing, and I'll catch you on the next show. Bye. Thank you for joining in on the Confessions of a Group X Instructor Podcast. If you're interested in becoming a Warrior Rhythm, Warrior Strength, Warrior Combat, or Warrior Kids Instructor, go to warriorinstructors.com. But if you want more and found this episode amazing, please give us a rating. And with a simple click to subscribe, we'll invite you back to our next episode. So remember, be brave, be bold, be blessed. And above all, listen, learn, love.